Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a snail cam, which is part of the uh, Metamata project for IED. And, um, you know, of all the shapes, this is kind of the one that uh, gets people. So I just want to walk you through how you could possibly create this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a standard part. And I'm going to start off with a 2D sketch, and I'm going to just do it upright. It doesn't matter really which one of the upright planes you choose. But I'm going to start off with just a circle. I'm going to choose a construction circle as I draw this because I don't want it to be part of my final creation. Um, you can use a diameter if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and change this um, to a uh, radius instead. And I'll kind of explain why. It's going to make my math easier in a little bit. But let's say um, 0.75 for a radius here just to give it a dimension. That means I got a 1.5 inch diameter circle. And I'm going to go through, I'm going to create a second circle, same idea. This one is going to be twice as big, so I'm going to make it 1.5. Those two radiuses are what I'm going to base everything else off of. So I've kind of got a starting point here, um, so it's fully constrained, so that's good. I'm kind of locked into place. Now let's start to draw the cam. First things first, I'm going to turn off my construction line. I'm just going to draw a physical line that goes from here straight down from one circle to the other. Those are going to be endpoints of an arc that I'm getting ready to draw. It says I need one dimension. If I come over here and check this out, it looks like it can move left to right. So I'm just going to throw in a quick vertical constraint and make sure that this, oh, excuse me, it's going to be horizontal in this orientation. I'll make sure that it's here and here are always lined up so it can't slide left to right. So now that's fully constrained. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a series of three arcs. The first one is going to start here at the bottom of this line. And it's going to come out about 25% out of the way from the first circle to the second. I'm just going to give it a smooth curve. The second one's going to start here. It's going to give you about 50% of the way between the two circles. Again, kind of smooth it out. Third one's going to start here, green dot, to about 75% of the way out. Smooth it out. And then the last one is going to go from here all the way up to the top end point. I'm going to smooth it out. Now, I can stop there, but that's not good enough for me. I still see I have 10 dimensions needed. Let me walk you through how we can do the rest of this. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to use a vertical constraint. It's kind of weird in this orientation. This is actually looks like horizontal to us, but I'm going to make sure that this cannot slide up or down. In fact, maybe I'll show this real quick. There we go, okay? It can slide left or right, but it can't slide up or down. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to make sure that this dot cannot slide what looks like up or down to us. And then I'm going to go through. I'm going to use the other type of constraint. It looks like it's vertical, but it's actually horizontal in this orientation. I'm going to make sure that that dot can't slide left or right. And I'm going to click OK. Everything else is fine. The rest of these things are just centers of radius um, for the for the curvatures that I have here, these three separate arcs. So we're going to fix those with something else in just a second. I'm going to get rid of that so you can see it. I'm getting pretty close. Next step, I want to make sure that I have a tangential constraint between each of the individual arcs. One, two, three. That's going to smooth out just a little bit more. Click OK. I can still move this thing around. You can see that things, you know, it's not locked into place yet. You can fiddle around with it. And, you know, there is a point where maybe you tell your kids, hey, this is good enough. Call that a day. But for me, I want to be able to do this the right way. I still have four dimensions that are needed. And what I really need to do is lock in the locations of this point, this point, and this point. So that's what I'm going to do next. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. Uh, it's not too bad, but it's a little complicated. I'm going to come up here to manage. I'm going to choose manage parameters. When I do that, that's going to bring up a table that's going to show me all of the dimensions that I have in place. So, for instance, I have D0 and D1 are 0.75 and 1.5. Those are the only things that I have dimensioned this entire sketch. I'm going to go through before I go any further. I'm going to call this uh, maybe like radius 1. I'm going to call this one here radius 2, R2. Okay. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to use those in some math equations here in just a second. So keep that in mind. I'm going to click Done. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to add some dimensions. The dimensions I'm going to add are the distance from the center point out to here. I'm going to just drag it all the way down here just to make it easy to see. 
I'm going to go from here to this point that I kind of fixed earlier. And I'm going to go from here out to the top point. Zoom out a little bit right there. Okay, so now I can see I've got three dimensions that I want to place. Okay, we'll get to that last one in just a second. So now my job is just to locate how far is it, okay, from here to here. So here's what I know. It's at least 0.75. And then what I want to do is I want to go 25% of the way out to the second circle. Well, if I know the difference between these two dimensions, that this is 1.5 and this is 0.75, I can multiply that difference by 0.25 and I'll have the 25%. So what it's going to look like in our Manage Parameters tab, which I feel like is easier to go and make the adjustment, is this. I'm going to call this, um, it doesn't matter what we call this, this is dimension 2 right now is 0.905, so we can see this 0.905 is what we're referring to. Let's just, um, let's call it like arc point one, arc one, okay? And instead of having just the 0.905, let's put in an equation. Let's say that it is R1, that's 0.75, and then we're going to add 25% of the difference between R2 and R1. And what that's going to do is it's going to do the calculation for us. You're going to see this pop up, see this nominal value here. Watch this. Aha, it says it should be actually 0.9375. So what it's done is it's fixed itself to 0.75 plus an additional 25% of the way between the two circles. We're just going to do the same thing. In fact, I'm just going to copy this here. I'm going to call this arc 2, and I'm going to call this arc 3. I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to control C to copy it. Control V to paste it, and the only difference is the second point, I want to be 50% of the way. And the third point, I want to be 75% of the way out to the third circle, to the second circle, excuse me. Now, whenever I finish that, notice it smooths itself out. How about that? So it says I need one dimension. The one dimension is something I missed earlier. I should have done it earlier. It's okay. I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to add one more tangent constraint. The last tangent constraint is going to be between this arc and the outer circle, and that's going to force this to meet at a right angle. And now we have the outline of our snail cam ready to go, fully constrained. I can click Finish Sketch. I can extrude it 3 sixteenths of an inch. Voila, there we go. Snail cam created. All you have to do at this point in time is go back and add the extrusion in the middle for your, your axle, whatever shape that might be. Um, easiest way to do that is just to start a sketch here. And you'll notice that the center point pops up. Let's say it's a circular hole. Okay, so I'm just going to add a point. Maybe it's a quarter inch rod that's going to go in this. I'm going to finish sketch, drill a hole, quarter inch hole, click OK, and we're done. Now we're ready. Hopefully that video helps you. Um, again, parametric equations, I feel like, are an easier way to do it than going through and doing calculations by hand, but maybe that's just me. I don't know. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask.